Oswestry is a town with a long history that reflects its special position on the border between England and Wales from its origins in Norman times through to the present day. Join us as we explore the streets, the shops, the pubs and the markets and fairs of Oswestry to find out how it developed over time. Little is known of the early history of Oswestry. What we do know is that there was a parish church dedicated to St Oswald and a castle built by the Sheriff Reynard mentioned in the Doomsday Book. And there may have been a hamlet known as Churton close to the parish church. But by the second half of the 12th century, a new town had started to develop immediately below the walls and ditches of Oswestry Castle. The origins of what we know today as Willow Street, Cross Street and The Cross. By the 13th century, burgage plots, long thin strips of land with a shop or house facing the street, had been laid out within the castle's outer bailey, forming what we know as Bailey Street. At around the same time, a stone wall was constructed around the town with four strong gates, Black Gate, Beatrice Gate, Willow Gate and New Gate, controlling access in and out of the town. Interestingly, the parish church, the Hospital of St John, and the whole of Churton lay outside the walled town. Over the centuries, the town continued to grow. Increased trade, particularly in wool and cloth, meant that by the 1530s, royal official John Leyland could report that there were 10 notable streets in the town. The three most notable being Cross Street, where there is a stone cross, Bailey Street, where there is the greatest market and merchants, and Newgate Street. Leyland also noted four suburbs, Church Street, Willow Street, Beatrice Street, and Blackgate Street, and that the houses were built of timber with slate roofs. The weekly market would have initially taken place directly below the castle and its outer bailey, in the area known as the Cross, it would have been larger than the open space we see today, extending back to the line of Clouth D, the castle's black ditch. William Fitzalan II, Lord of Oswestry, granted the town its first charter in 1190. In this charter, he received into his hand and protection his burgesses of Oswestry, namely those who received land in my bailiwick for the improvement of my market. This was firm evidence that a market had been established in Oswestry. An annual fair on the Feast of St Andrew, November the 30th, was granted to John Fitzalan I in 1228, along with a weekly market. However, permission for the fair was quickly withdrawn due to complaints from neighbouring towns. The fair was finally allowed in 1253. In 1263, John Fitzalan II granted a second charter still known today as Oswestry's Market Charter, granting the burgesses full and free power and authority to make rules for their profit and well-being, and required that the buying and selling of goods should take place within the town at the public place where they are used and accustomed to be sold and bought. Shops were much simpler affairs at that time. Most burgesses would have lived above or behind their shop premises or their place of work. The building we know as Lloyd Mansion was built in the mid 15th century. On the ground floor, there were three or four self-contained shops facing Cross Street. Above each shop was a small open hall providing living space. Shops like these along with the markets catered for the needs of local people. The wool trade was important to Oswestry from the 13th century onwards, reaching its peak during the reigns of Elizabeth I and James I. Leyland wrote that the town standeth most by sale of cloth made in Wales, and Oswestry's first historian John Davis wrote in 1635 that Oswestry flourished and was happy indeed by reason of the market of Welsh cottons, thereof great store was bought and sold in the town every week, 
adding that above 1,000 sterling in ready money was paid and left in the town every Monday through the year, and sometimes far more upon special fares. This was a considerable sum in the 17th century. Deals between weavers and drapers from Shrewsbury and elsewhere took place in houses anciently reserved for the market, such as the Three Tons Inn on Bailey Street, as the town had no specific cloth hall. But by the 1540s, there was a market hall. Leyland described it as a fair house of timber standing by the castle, and a document dated to 1613 refers to both a new market house and an old market house or town hall sited on the Bailey Head. Oswestry lost its important status in the wool trade in the 1620s to Shrewsbury, damaging the town's prosperity. Efforts continued into the 1640s to bring the trade back to Oswestry, but to no avail. However, wool and cloth remained important to the local economy, employing many local people. Oswestry's wool hall survived until 1782, when it was replaced by a new guild hall, which was itself replaced in 1893 by the building which we see today. Local traders and makers provided for the everyday needs of people with more specialist items provided by travelling sellers at the market or fair. However, from the early 17th century, there was demand for a wider range of goods. The town had its own cutlers, pewterers and brass workers. There were specialist hatters and breeches makers, and by the first quarter of the 18th century, there were wig makers too, soon followed by clock and watchmakers, booksellers and wine merchants. Cattle and sheep were sold in Church Street, the horse market was in Willow Street, and pigs were sold on the hill or void where the castle had been. It was not until 1849 that purpose-built facilities for the sale of livestock were provided. The Smithfield in English Walls and the horse market behind the castle bank. These developments were matched by new market buildings. The Powys Hall in 1849 as a butter and cheese market and corn exchange and the cross market built in 1842 for the sale of poultry, fruit and vegetables, butter and eggs. Inns and taverns of some kind have been part of the town centre from its early origins. The names of these premises began to appear in our records in the 16th and 17th centuries. The Red Lion on the Bailey Head, the Fox on Church Street and the Bell opposite the parish church. In the 18th century, some like the Windstay and the Cross Keys in Leg Street became coaching inns, places for male coaches to stop and change horses, providing refreshments and accommodation, as well as venues for meetings and property auctions. The increase in road traffic meant that a decision was made to demolish the medieval gateways, the Black Gate in 1776 and the remaining three in 1782, replaced by pillars with the words toll through and the arms of the Earl of Powys, Lord of the Manor. Tolls to enter the town remained in place until the early 1830s. Oswestry was growing fast. Growth accelerated by the coming of the railways in the late 1840s with the line to Chester and Shrewsbury and the subsequent developments of the Cambrian Railways Network, which had its headquarters in Oswestry. The second half of the 19th century saw major changes in the town centre, with the widening of Bailey Street and Cross Street, and the development of much grander shop fronts designed to impress. Many old-fashioned, half-timbered properties, shops and also pubs, such as the Sun and the Plough, were replaced by modern buildings built out of brick. Department stores opened, Glasgow House in Cross Street, and R&R &R Hughes on the Cross. Into the 20th century, most shops remained locally owned, but increasingly they faced pressures from regional or national chains moving into the town. Early examples were the shoe shops, Stead and Simpsons, and Oliver's. Boots the Chemist opened in 1899, with Curry's and Halfords both opening cycle shops in the 1920s. 
Woolworths opened a store on Cross Street in 1932 and was joined by Littlewoods in 1950. The local cooperative society had a number of town centre shops too. Tesco was the first modern supermarket to reach Ossestry and they placed themselves right in the centre of the town on Bailey Street, taking over from Irwin's opposite New Street. Further up the street, Fine Fair was built on the site of Osborne's Hotel. In 1970, the first Iceland store in the country opened in Leg Street. The two main market halls also went through changes. The Powys Market was rebuilt in 1963 and the Cross Market was demolished and replaced by a large new Woolworths store. In 1969, the livestock market moved from the town centre to Shrewsbury Road. Its former site became a car park, as did much of the horse market. Shopping habits have changed so much from the early medieval time. However, today, just as all those centuries ago, Ossestry is home to quality independent stores with its market at the heart of the town as it has been for 800 years. Ossestry remains a place to visit, a place to shop and a place to meet friends with an atmosphere which draws on the town's Welsh border location and its rich history.